Hi, I'm Lake Bell, and I'm in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. Not only are you in studio, you made oh. a TV show. Oh, wow. That's a professional segue. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what they I, call in I the biz. I had it written down. <laughs> oh, you did. And now... Um, <laughs> you made a TV show. What does that feel like? I made a television show um, <laughs> called Bless This Mess. Yeah. It's going to be on the television. It's going to be on the small screen. All of it. Mm -hmm. All of the TVs um, for ABC. And Liz Merriweather, who I'm sure you've run into over the years. I've run into her over capacity. the years. Somewhere where like, she was like, it was like a year and a half ago, you know, I called her up and literally, you know, I'd had my second kid and I was like, God, I was just like thinking about her and she had just gotten married and I was like, do you want to get a coffee and just like talk about stuff? And she was like, of course. And we sat down and I proposed to her an idea. I was like, will you make a TV show with me? Wow. And she was like, I do. Um... And uh, she was really super jazzed on it. It was very casual. We were like, hey, let's just talk, like, let's, like, spitball a couple ideas here and there, ping pong. And all of a sudden, you know, we both found that a lot of the fodder for comedy that we enjoyed um, was about our somewhat new marriages. And the kind of that sweet spot in the newlywed period where you're kind of, you know, your best version of yourself, truly. And then you know, the onion peels a bit and you start to reveal your true self um, and all the things that are sort of cute in the beginning are just like annoying or, or whatever. And it's not like, it's a very sweet time where you're being very earnest with yourself and earnest with your partner and that is where it started. So it was always like the core relationship. Wow. And then we were like, you know what though? Darn, I love a good fish out of water comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and we just were like, Bang, bang, like we want to like investigate something that just has miles of, of um, comedy, you know, juice. And so I expressed to her that me and my husband, who are very different, like she, she and I both are very different from our spouses. Um, my husband's like born in Louisiana and lived in Texas and he's just like very capable and if the apocalypse is coming like he's got you you know what I mean and I'm from New York and sure I've got some street smarts <laughs> and I know how to organize a pantry like nobody's business but I don't know that I will know what to do in the event of the doomsday uh, so the two of us together you know we have this dream of kind of leaving it all one day. You know, it's like a lot of people kind of have that thing secretly where they're kind of like in their phones a lot and, you know, watching TV and then beep, beep, bah. you know, it's just like all this shit about, sorry, well, that, that, are we allowed? We can do it. Bleep it. Keep going. Um, it can get even dirtier, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. watch out. Um, potty mouth. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think we all, I think that generationally even, I almost think it's, dare I say it's a zeitgeist for us to be a little bit enamored and sort of longing for this like romance of of picking up and leaving the mayhem and and the and the quick paced nature of our f existence you know it's a, it's a i think a sort of cultural interest you know to kind of slow down and so that's where the idea and really sort of came from it's like it's for me totally a fantasy it's real you know so meaning you you fantasize about yeah. doing that yourself yeah the lake bell of it all oh, the lake bell yeah <laughs> because well there's a lot of lake bell in yeah. this uh you wrote directed the pilot co-created the show mm -hmm. you star in it yeah there's a lot of lake bell but but it's interesting to hear that that also there's a lot of you in the storyline because i wondered that while Re, you know, refreshing my memory about yeah. the Lake Bell of it all, that you did grow up in New York. And I think a lot of people have that idea of just leaving it behind, and especially to the Midwest, because the Midwest, no matter where you're from, it represents this sort of, like... Americana. Yeah. It's, like, farmland. It's the heartland. And I feel like, you know, especially because um, Liz Merriweather, who we co-created and co-wrote this together, and we EP it together, she... And she's, she's our showrunner as well, so she... She's from Michigan, and it was really important to us to, you know, sort of bring, infuse a very authentic, real Midwestern flavor into the show and have that part of the country represented in a way that did them, pr did, you know, those, those states proud. Right. For instance, we have our writer's room, 
is 90% Midwesterners. So oh, that's wow. great. You got we 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 found the only like Hollywood comedy writers that are like born and raised in the Midwest and um, we've got Nebraska Missouri uh, Nebraska Wisconsin Iowa uh, sorry you're Iowa yeah um, yeah. Ohio and Pam Greer you know I was gonna let's talk just about talk about, about yeah. Pam Greer we could talk the rest of this interview should about just be Pam, Pam Greer, Greer. Pam yeah, Greer. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, she like lives and breathes her farm and ranch in, wow. in Colorado like right now like as we're sitting here She's there. Donned in pink light. <laughs> she is, like, nurturing fledgling animals from a hay stack? Yeah, hay stack. I don't know. Hay right? stack. Like, this is what I'm Definitely saying. I don't know. Stack. I don't know the word. And also one of the things I love, the chemistry between you and Dax. Yes. So tell me about that and... Uh, and was it instant? Was it your decision to work with him? How did that... Because I know he's an executive producer, too. Yeah, I mean, he, he sort of says that we met like at a party years and years ago. I don't remember that in- interaction, but the, he always says that. He's like, we met waiting in the line for a bathroom. And I was like, what bathroom? And also <laughs> like, is that our story? Like a bathroom? I don't know. Uh, you know. So anyway, I don't want to rewrite history, but for me, I remember him because we, our children go went to the same preschool, and so he was like the, like another like he was like an actor dad, and I was like an actor actor mommy, and I was like hey actors, and um, and then uh, when we were writing this show, we were kind of like let's just put in Dak Shepard in the mouth of Mike, you know, just for writing purposes because he's exactly right for it. So we'll just use him as a template, which often you do when you're writing characters. So. You can cast anyone you want while you're writing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it came time to kind of offer it to someone, we're like, should we just go? Let's go for Dax and see if he says yes. And so and then he said yes. That's and um, it was kind of amazing. And then all of a sudden, you know, we were in a situation where it's like, well, I hope we have comedic chemistry together. You know, it's like all I got is like I was in the parking lot with him a couple times and like talked about school drop-offs. But, but uh, lo and behold, you know, I think we showed up I think it was a read through initially, and I was just like, "This is this is gangbusters." Like we, we're just, I enjoy working with him so much because it's so easy the the musicality of what we find funny and the way that we sort of ping pong um, bits is like uh, very very natural. I feel like that's rare. You know, it's like it's either there, or it's not, and it's just there. It's there, and it shows. It definitely shows on screen. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you. When you're when you're so in charge the way that you are, and then you to take a job like Secret Life of Pets. I mean, I assume that's really fun because you can just show up and oh. have some fun in the booth. But but also it, it's something you you can experience with your kids right when it comes out. So tell me totally. how much fun is it to do that movie? This is going to be the first year that I really can like because with Secret Life of Pets one Nova was still too young. You know, I saw it and I was like, Ooh, okay, like she's she's only one, you know, I, I don't even we don't we barely do screens, like this is a lot of energy. But now she's four. She's a grown woman. Um <laughs> and she can handle it and I'm gonna be taking her as my date to the premiere. That's so, so fun. Yeah. And um my little my little son Ozzy, he's not he's almost two, so he might he might have to wait for have to pets wait. three if there are ever is what one. but what could people expect from this are there what secrets are revealed and then listen new... I am not allowed to talk to you in depth about this very hush hush um, <laughs> but I play a cat <laughs> okay this just in um, yeah. no it's really funny when we do like junkets and press for it they're like tell us a little bit about your character your, and your, like how you get into yeah. the character and I'm like. Play a cat. <laughs> play a cat. <laughs> so, Do you spend so, a lot of time with cats? I'm like, shelters? yeah. I'm so sorry. I play yeah. cat. <laughs> but it's it it's really no. It's super groovy actually. Being um, uh, sort of accepted into the cat community, cat <laughs> lover community. Um, I've always had dogs, and now I feel like you know. You see a cat on the street and you're like, hey. I feel, yeah, I feel like a sassy kitty. (laughs) Um, You know, I feel like I have that uh, cred now. Can we talk about the competitiveness of the cannabis industry in L.A.? Every day there's like a new press release about some new cannabis pop-up or some new strain or some new thing at Barney's or some new thing. Well, the new thing at Barney's is Bebo. Is Bebo, which is your your husband's brand. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not worried. I feel like... It's all good. You're going to end up with Bebo. It's fine. Yes. Yeah, so and I only say that because it's fucking amazing. <laughs> 
it's how I can like get through the day. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. But now there's Bebo Therapies, which is like a high potency C B D oil for your Oh wow. You're just like it's a serum and you're just like, I'm decadent and I'm taking care of myself. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and so, it works. Yeah. But there's all this talk about if C B D oil actually works and where's the research and because everyone says I use it for everything. And is that well, true? It's it, not it's not the and my husband's so good at, at describing this. He will describe it better than me, but basically like CBD in layman's term, it's not like, you know, a chemical that's going to infuse and change something in you. It's sort of like taking what already exists in your body's makeup and helping it work better. So it's not like, like if something's not functioning well, it, it can enhance ostensibly. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'm saying it can, it, what I understand is that it enhances you mm. to function better. Not that... You know, like if if you have something in your body and it's like inflamed, you know, it can like quell that. Wow. Yeah. You operate at like a pretty quick pace. So you yes. only use it at the end of the night. That's uh, when I, yeah. yes. Unwind. And I think that's important because yeah. if I don't unwind at the end of the day, then I am not a person in the next, the next morning. So <laughs> yeah. it's important like at the end of the day, that's for downtime, yeah, for yeah. Indica. Because I do ho- operate at a high RPM, and so there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of, like, irons in the fire, and I, and I just, um, in order to turn down, pew, pew, and, like, systems down, <laughs> you know, to power off, I have to, and I enjoy, I don't have to, but I enjoy the help of an indica, which is a THC CBD blend, and it is a blend that is calming and relaxing. That's great. Makes your mind calm. I yeah. feel calm. Yeah. Thank you for blessing this interview. Oh. I could we could go on all day. I know you have a lot of irons in the fire, so you gotta go deal with those irons. Oh my gosh. Get out there in the world. Then I gotta get home and do some C B D yeah. THC <laughs> bingo bango <laughs> and call it a day. Yeah, and uh, good luck with the premiere and the show and thank I guess you. I'll see you in the hallway. I'll see you in the hallway I'll for sure. Hallway. Oh yeah, I've got a lot more. Thank you for joining us today in studio. We'll I'm see wearing you a skirt. next time. I'm wearing a skirt. <laughs>